The first marine base on the East Coast came into being after military planners began searching in July 1940 to find an area that could provide all aspects of amphibious training for Marines. Five months later, the New River area in Onslow County was chosen. On February 15, 1941, Congress approved $1.5 million to build the military facility. Construction of Camp Lejeune began in April of 1941. At that time, it was known as Marine Barracks New River. Following the death of General John Archer Lejeune, the camp was renamed in his honor in December of 1942. General Lejeune is generally regarded as having been the greatest Marine. He commanded the 4th Marine Brigade in France and the 2nd United States Army Division in France during World War I, and during his tenure as the 13th Commandant from 1920 to 1929, he is credited with transforming the Marine Corps from light colonial infantry to a modern amphibious force. Another piece of trivia involves the way the camp's name is pronounced. Most people tend to call it Camp Lejeune, but the pronunciation of the general's name is actually Lejeune instead of Lejeune. Despite the phonetics, one thing was certain. Camp Lejeune was about to make a major impact in North Carolina and beyond. The East Coast Division, designated the 1st Marine Division, arrived at Camp Lejeune in September 1941. And after conducting exercises in the Caribbean and across Onslow Beach while the land was being acquired, it settled into quarters of what was called Tent Camp, now Camp Geiger, a temporary facility where the division trained while permanent facilities were being constructed here at Mainside. During World War II, it was determined by military leaders that the Army would perform amphibious landings in Europe, while the Marine Corps would be restricted to fighting in the Pacific. But that still didn't stop the Camp Lejeune Marines from becoming key players in the war. With the entry of the United States in the war, the 1st Marine Division, still undermanned and short of its training objectives, was ordered to the Pacific to undertake the nation's first offensive operation. On 7 August 1942, Marines struck at Guadalcanal and effectively ended any further hopes of conquest by Imperial Japan. Camp Lejeune was also the only facility for women in the Marines. Almost 19,000 women trained exclusively at Camp Lejeune between 1943 and 1945. The camp was also the base for soldiers of the four-legged kind. Camp Lejeune was home for what was known as the Devil Dogs, canines used during combat as messengers or to alert Marines of approaching enemies. After World War II, the Marine Corps lost four of its six divisions. In addition, Camp Lejeune's 1st Marine Division switched places with the 2nd Marine Division at Camp Pendleton, California in 1946. Despite the shortages, General Douglas MacArthur called upon the original 1st Marine Division in 1950 to fight in the Korean War. The superb performance of the augmented 1st Marine Division at Incheon and during the remainder of the war reestablished the nation's need for a general purpose task-organized amphibious force and readiness and guaranteed the continued existence of the Marine Corps. The 1st and the 2nd Marine Divisions had saved Korea and the Korean War had saved the Marine Corps. Camp Lejeune's units did not deploy to Vietnam. The base continued to be a training center for Marines during the Vietnam War and the Cold War with the Soviet Union. The camp continued its focus on artillery and amphibious training. Camp Lejeune is the resting place of a memorial that honors its fallen comrades, following one of the single most horrific tragedies in Marine history. On October 23, 1983, a terrorist drove a large delivery truck loaded with explosives into the Marine barracks at the International Airport in Beirut, Lebanon. 220 Marines and 21 other U.S. service members were killed.
The Marine Corps continues the tradition of protecting U.S. interests today by serving in areas such as Iraq and Afghanistan. And Camp Lejeune continues its tradition in making sure it remains true to the Marines' motto, Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. You have 78 live fire ranges, 98 maneuver areas, 34 gun positions, 50 tactical landing zones, three combat towns, and 11 miles of beach for amphibious training. All that training that is required for all the occupational specialties in the Marine Expeditionary Force is being conducted here at Camp Lejeune. So when those Marines go to Afghanistan and Iraq, they will be perfectly capable of performing the functions that they need to do to make sure our military objectives are met there. I grow up, I'm going to be a Marine and go to Camp Lejeune, and we would say it just like that. And then later on the air, I used Lejeune like everybody else did. But 23 years ago, an old radio program director corrected me. He said the Marine base was named for a famous general who came out of the Cajun country of Louisiana, and that it was pronounced Lejeune. Well, I've used that ever since. But since I get so much flack about it, both inside and outside the station, I got real interested in the name and also in the man. So before I capitulate, I'd like to share with you my story about one of America's greatest military heroes. He took us on a Sky 5 trip into the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and the prestigious Virginia Military Institute that spawned the careers of Generals Stonewall Jackson and George Marshall. It's also where John Archer Lejeune came to serve as superintendent in 1929, after his years as Commandant of the Marine Corps. An important building at VMI now bears his name. I talked with the Deputy Superintendent. General, what do you call this building back here? This is Lejeune Hall. You know, uh, down in North Carolina, everybody says Lejeune. Why do you say Lejeune? We say Lejeune because that was the man's name. The General had three daughters. One of them lives near the campus of VMI. Do you, has anyone ever told you that, uh, that you mispronounce your own name? <laughs> no, because I don't. <laughs> Even I mean, Peter Jennings says Lejeune. He does? The pictures in Miss Lejeune's scrapbook tell the story of her famous father. He was a graduate of the Naval Academy, but took a commission in the Marine Corps. It was in World War I and on the battlefields of France that he distinguished himself as a fighter and a leader of the second division. It is said that his men loved him. The French admired him too for his skill and courage and because he could speak French fluently. Some writers would later call him the greatest leatherneck of them all. When it was over, he would lead his famous second division in a victory parade down New York's Fifth Avenue. Miss Laura remembers. Red Cross lady or somebody rushed out in the street with a bunch of flowers <laughs> and it scared the horse. <laughs> and the horse went up on his hind legs. Some years later, the Secretary of the Navy, Josephus Daniels, would name him the Marine Corps' 13th Already Commandant. Don't fight, don't fight, his last active years were spent here at VMI, training other young men for military service. Shortly after his death in 1942, the largest marine base in the world was named for him in Jacksonville, North Carolina. It's the home of his beloved 2nd Division. American hero, John Archer Lejeune. Lejeune.